I was born in Lagos, Nigeria to a family of eight. We were three boys and three girls. I was the first. Being the first meant I inherited responsibilities at a very young age. My mom at that point in time was a cosmetologist. I remember my early childhood photos of me being in a hairdryer, always playing, you know, always having so much fun. My dad had, used to work for a manufacturing firm. At that point in time, the firm had some challenges and uh, he was among those ones who were forced to go on early retirement. Uh, so when my dad was sacked, my mom became the sole breadwinner for the family. I remember back then, she used to be very heavy on me learning the skill. Thank God I listened to her and then I developed the first skill I had was to be a barber. You know, so it was fun. Uh, at that point in time, my mom was doing very, very well in her business. A cosmetologist, she was well known in the city. And so we moved to a three bedroom uh, apartment which had a warehouse attached to the three bedroom apartment which she used as a place of business. Exceptionally well, she was doing so great, you know, but not everyone was uh, happy seeing that growth process especially uh, the owner of the property. So we got evicted and uh, when we got evicted, my parents said they don't want us to move into someone's house anymore. They want us to have control. They want us to be in control. So what did we do? Imagine a family of eight all moving to one single room. Just picture that. But that was a difficult time for us, but we persevered. We never allowed that to bother us. We kept our mind on our goal. We knew what we wanted to achieve as a family you know so some time passed and we lost my dad which was a, a very difficult time my mom was devastated it was a blow to the family it was a very difficult time for us and that meant that i had to step up as the first and so at night i'll be doing all kinds of menial jobs just to support the family and during the day i was going to the barber shop to also try to see what i can do to also support the family uh, my life took a u-turn when I first met my mentor. Incidentally, his name is Jeff. He was based in Florida and he was an options instructor and coach, a successful coach in the options world. I was curious as a young man growing up how the wealthy make money. That was my drive. You know, I was always very curious about this and that led me into derivative instruments which led me into the world of options. And when I met Jeff as a mentor, uh, when I told him what I wanted to do, he said, Jeff, for you to be certified, for you to get your certification, you have to have a score of over 60 in your final exam. I was very, very determined. I was all in. I'm someone, I'm an action taker. And so when I went into the world of options, at my early 20s, I was doing research. I was spending my day, night, reading, studying, everything, just name it, I did everything, burning the midnight candle, so to speak. And so during my final exam, I got a score of 80. Jeff was shocked, he was surprised. So I was excited. Here I am, a young child, growing up, mastering the world of options, but sad to say, in the entire African market, there was no of the exchanges, either talking about options trading or having investors invest into options trading. So, it was something I had to do, you know, I have to reinvent the wheel. And so I got excited when a local uh, financial newspaper approached me and they wanted me to be a columnist for their paper on the world on options trading, talking about options. So I was excited. Here I am having that ability, that opportunity to share my knowledge with the rest of the world. Of course, I took that opportunity with both hands. So I went into writing for that paper and I got a lot of you know opportunities to speak at events on the world of options, being invited to be on TV shows, which was exciting. Now, in one of my travels from Lagos to Abuja, I was in my hotel room and an ad appeared on TV and it was about Forex market. At this point in time, I had one or two ideas of what the Forex market was. But I knew for a fact that the Forex market was the most liquid market in the world played by the big banks. As a matter of fact, as of April 19, 2019, the forex market was a $6.6 .6 trillion a day market. Let us sink it for a while. So I knew there was a big place, it's heavy deals that move the forex world. So I wanted to know how this market is being played. What drives the forex market? Of course, I needed help. 
I needed to invest in myself. I needed to invest in knowledge. I needed to buy speed. I needed a mentor. So when I went online researching and finding out a mentor, I eventually found a mentor who was willing and ready to take me in and show me the ropes on how the forex market works. In 2004, I became so proficient in the forex world that I was approached by banks to be an internal trader. But not just banks. I had brokers who were watching my trades. My trades were conservative and consistent and that was a driving factor for those brokers to approach me to trade with them. But I decided to go ahead and form my firm with a partner called Bosinger Financials. I trained thousands of students across the African market on the world of options, on the world of forex trading. At this point in time, I also got regular TV appearances to be a guest host for some of the top financial TV stations in African markets. Among those ones, you had uh, Business Morning on Channel TV, The Morning Show on AIT, and of course, CNBC Africa. Daily analyzing the Forex market, helping investors to understand how the Forex market really does play. I was fortunate to train thousands of students across the African market. As a matter of fact, I had students who were making over 50,000 US dollars on some good days. It was a wonderful period of, for us. But in 2008, when the world experienced the first global meltdown, every strategy, all the patterns we used to know that works, stopped working. It was a very difficult time for us in the market. In fact, I remember in one of those days, I lost over $10,000 on one single day. It was devastating to put it mildly. So imagine you trading with fear and emotions. Imagine entering a trade and only to see the markets come to your stop loss and taking you out before going in your direction. Imagine the sleepless night you experience trading the markets. Just imagine you allowing your losses to continue to accrue but you take gains out quickly from the markets. Does that sound familiar? Everything I see today on the news, on YouTube, about the market is what used to work in the past. I see traders today when they trade the market, they take over 20, 30, 50, even 100 trades in a single month. The banks are never in a rush. Why are you in a rush? So all those systems in 2008 collapsed. The pivot lines, the breakout strategy, the Fibonacci retracement, Everything we knew that used to work in the market stopped working. Not saying that this pattern don't work sometimes, they do. However, they are not consistent. And that is why over 95% of traders are blowing their accounts. So, in that period during 2008, you know, I lost literally everything using the old system, using that old pattern that used to work. Some years later, when I moved to the US, here I was a single parent with two boys and had no money, you know, had no want of, no, no fallback plan, no supports. You know, I had to start all over again from ground zero. And so what did I do? I had to fall back on the skills I had initially acquired. So at night, I was in downtown Atlanta, you know, doing dishes for one of the top pizza outlets. And during the day, I was going to the uh, barber school to get my license as a cosmetologist as well. But I knew there had to be a better way to approach the market. So I kept doing my research, I kept studying, I kept going deep to find out more. And I reached out to a mentor because I knew that I could not do this myself. I needed direction, I needed a guide, I needed someone who has been there, who has done it, that can show me how the banks really do trade the market. There was a reason only 5% of traders are getting it right in this market. There has to be a better way. Good to know my mentor was willing and ready to take me in as a student and he showed me the ropes. He showed me how the banks played this market. He showed me the method to use to be consistent, not in the short term, not in the medium term, but over the long term. Fast forward to today, we have launched a groundbreaking tool called the Queen. The Queen collapses the top three patterns that we use to trade the forex market. Imagine you taking a trade and each trade you take 
is 95% accurate. Some of our tricks, if you look at on YouTube, some of our tricks are 150 pips minimum. Trades go over 350 pips on our profit level in some of our trades. That's the quality of what we're talking So when it comes to trading, Forex trading is not about the quantity of your trades. Instead, it's about the quality of your trade that makes you money. So imagine you trading with peace of mind. Imagine taking fear and emotions away from your trade. Imagine having that ability right now to print your own paycheck on demand, even on vacation. Imagine you having that ability to give your family and your loved ones and yourself the life you deserve. Imagine being in control of your own financial future. No fear of a job loss. Zero fear. Imagine having zero fear of a loss of your accounts. It's impossible. You have to be away from the 95%. There is a reason the crowd always lose. You have to learn to join the 5%. And that's what the queen brings to you. So if you are a fast action taker, if you are someone who's decisive, in life, you cannot read a label from inside the jar. You need a mentor to guide you. Are you willing to invest in speed? Are you willing to invest in yourself? Are you willing to invest in knowledge? Are you willing to buy millions of dollars of mistakes so that you don't have to make those mistakes yourself? You can make money or you can make excuses, but you cannot make money from excuses.